Hello, I'm Mike Wilson, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers from the Indiana State House. We've got officials and lawmakers from across the state, and they're joining me during this legislative session. And we've got a lot of different issues to talk about in this uh, short session. Senator Greg Taylor joins us right now, and uh, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you for having me. So uh, we've got uh, with these different pieces of legislation something that you've been working on for you know several years now. I think we can see, can we call it several? Yeah, let's use that term. Several. Hate crime legislation. Tell me about it. Well, hate crime legislation, I like to use the word bias, but it's hate. Sometimes people want to refer to it as a hate crime. says that if you have a bias against somebody based on some inalienable characteristics of the individual and you decide that based on your bias towards that person to either harm them or their personal property, that you can be charged with a crime in Indiana. And unfortunately, unlike 45 other states, we have a system that uh, does not recognize that as a crime in the state of Indiana. And it just says merely that a judge, in making their sentence recommendation or making a, in having a sentencing, if a judge finds that a person has committed the crime against a person or their property based on those inalienable characteristics, that that judge can enhance the penalty on the sentence. That's all it does, like so, more it has. So instead of confining it to what's in the statutory limitation, they can then expand it based off of what they know. Like everything else, for example, if you found to sell drugs within 500 feet of a school, a church, or a different organization and children are present, we see that as more heinous than just selling drugs, you know, on a street corner where there's nobody present. So we've got an enhancement that the uh, prosecutor can charge. For example, if you've convicted, convicted, been convicted of a prior crime and you commit that same crime again, we allow the court, because you committed it a second time, to enhance the penalty. It's not something that we, that, that's, that's new to the state of Indiana. What is new, however, is the fact that we've seen over and over across this state that people, based on their bias, will act out on that bias. What kind of message do you think that sends? Well, it sends a message to the rest of the country that we are a state that welcomes everybody. Well, we have too many things happening in the state that, that point otherwise. Uh, during testimony on this hearing, I had a mother, a brave mother from, from uh, the Fort Wayne area who came down and talked about her son being beaten unconscious. The day before the hearing, her, assa that her son's assailant was sentenced to 30 days in juvenile detention for beating her son unconscious and calling him certain racial slurs while doing it. Nobody doubts. As a matter of fact, the charging information said that he was charged with battery with racial undertones. And the kid was sentenced to 30 days in a juvenile detention center. I just think that's a weak message. We need to send a stronger message. And the fear that I have is that once people figure out the law doesn't protect them, they take the law into their own hands. And I don't want that to happen. So the concern is people would say, well, we can't be the thought police. How do we, how do we determine what somebody would do that would show bias? Right. I think you just gave us a pretty clear-cut example, though, of Right. How you prove that, right? Listen, we're not saying that you can't have a bias. I might have a bias against people with beards, for example. Which you shouldn't. All right, because I have a goatee and right. I like beards. Okay. All right. But if I go and I spray paint your car and say, bearded people, mm -hmm. no more bearded people, then that is a bias crime. But if I think something and I say, I don't like people with beards or I don't trust people with beards, there's no crime there. Mm-hmm. It's not the thought. It's we the are action. penalizing the action mm -hmm. based on that thought. And it's, this is the, so in, in most cases, it's no, there's no question as to whether or not the activity is motivated by bias. When you spray paint a swastika in a synagogue, you shouldn't have to question that. When you burn a cross in a black family's yard, you shouldn't have to question that. Thank you so much, Senator, for joining us. Thank you. And for more great conversations with community leaders, please join us at ComcastNewsmakers.com.